Hello, world. It's good to be back with you. It's me, Ken Simmons, by Area 58 Community Access Media. Welcome to the Ken Simmons Show. Um, you know, I keep saying every time I get on the air, I'm going to tell you something from the newspaper, something that's good, something that's not. But all I see is bad stuff. Now, all of a sudden, this guy, this, this guy that I respected is all of a sudden accused of being a, a harasser if it's a good word, if it's a word at all. And I just don't know what's going on. I think the culture is starting to change. I think women are finally saying, enough, enough. When a guy comes in, I'm working in the coffee shop, and he says, good morning, sweetheart. I'm not a sweetheart. I'm not anybody's sweetheart. I'm working here trying to make a living. Same Steve working someplace, trying to make a living also. I think that's what's going to happen. So I'm not going to talk about that. I do want to talk about one of my favorite guys. I remember I mentioned some time ago, his name is Henry David Thoreau, pronounced Thoreau. Uh, and I just found out uh, a startling fact about him, startling to me anyway. I thought I knew all there was to know about good old Hank. But back in the 1800s, early, middle 1800s, uh, he was arrested. I didn't know that. And you know what he's arrested for? And this is going to tickle my guests fancy, I think, and you're going to see why in a few minutes. He was arrested for non-payment of poll tax. Now, for those of you that don't know what poll tax is, I remember the days when my father, during the Depression, had to pay a $2 poll tax to be able to vote. He had to pay to vote two bucks, and he didn't have $2. If he had $2, he used it to feed his family, his family of three, during the Depression, when he wasn't working. So you know what? A sheriff came to the house, and they said, if you don't pay us the $2, we're going to arrest you right now. He didn't have the $2, and they arrested him. They took him away. Now, when Henry David Thoreau was languishing in jail up there in Concord, Ralph Waldo Emerson came to him. Yeah, they were friends. Ralph Waldo Emerson was his mentor, really. He said, Henry, what are you doing here? And Henry said, Ralph, why aren't you here? Because it was his way. He, that's where civil disobedience came in. And remember, Henry David Thoreau, the, his followers were a great man by the name of Mahatma Gandhi. And if you don't know about him, that's room for another show. And a guy by the name of Martin Luther King. They were followers of Henry David Thoreau because they liked his civil, civil disobedience without violence. He was a nonviolent guy, and so were they. All right, enough of that, enough of my drivel. I'm going to introduce you to my guest, and I must tell you, I'm just a little bit intimidated. I'll tell you more about that later. So don't go away. Take off your shoes and make yourself comfortable. Pour yourself a drink. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are back, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to my guest in just a few minutes, if I can talk. Um, I'm a little bit intimidated, I, uh, I've got to tell you that, because this man that I'm about to introduce to you, in my opinion, and I've seen a lot of community access television, is the best at what he does on television. I think that, I watch his show every night. I don't watch the reprints, the reruns, but I watch his show. I watched it last night, and to me, it was kind of a, la a, a sad kind of a show because he's saying goodbye. And we're going to find out about that in just a minute. So remember, I'm just a little bit intimidated, and I'm going to introduce to you now Mr. Larry Erickson. Ken, good to see you. Good to see you, Larry. Good to see you. I heard that you're leaving. And we'll get into that later. I'd like to save that for the second segment. I'd like the people to know a little bit about you. Do you mind? Not at all. Okay. You. You I sound. It's generally pretty dull, but. Uh. <laughs> you. You're a married man. Yes. You said last night. You said you gave your wife a pretty good plug. That was pretty nice. I really, really like that. Can I ask how long you've been married? Uh, I'm going to embarrass myself now. I have to always have to 
do the calculation at this point, but it's about 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, close to it. You're a lovely lady. Yeah. Is she a school teacher? No, a registered nurse. Registered nurse. Were you a school teacher? No. You weren't? No. Where did I get that idea? I don't know. <laughs> Were you? Probably because I sat behind a desk so much. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that. Somewhere I got the idea that, I even got the idea that maybe you were a college professor. No, I mean, uh, probably because, if anything, I, I have worked in education most of my adult life. You were uh, in education? Yeah, uh, in museums. I worked in the Museum of Science in Boston for several years. I worked at uh, a... No, wait a minute. What did you do in the Museum of Science? I did programs on uh, physics, astronomy, a couple of animal things. Uh, we worked in the, tra I was part of the, uh, the, the traveling program crew. We were the ones that would go out to the schools to do the presentations oh, that's there. Great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. What, what college did you attend? It was then called Newark College of Engineering. It's now New Jersey Institute of Technology. Wow. Uh, that's in Newark, New Jersey. Master's degree? Uh, none. None? No. N-U-N or N-O-N-E? N-O-N-E. N-O-N-E. I, I got to stop you here, man, because you, uh, in my opinion, are an intellectual. And how do you get to be an intellectual without getting at least a master's degree from an Ivy League school? You, what you do is you get out of school so you can go back to learning. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I, uh, I listen to your show, as you know, and I know the preparation that this man does is, uh, is, is, is just incredible. I don't know anybody else that does the kind of preparation he does for his show. Am I right? I don't know what, uh, what other people do. I mean, it just, yeah, it is a fair amount of time yeah. in each show. There's, How long? How long will it take you to do a show? In a, in a week, yeah. uh, probably about 20 hours. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Especially where it's kind of a volunteer job. Yeah, no, uh, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the uh, monetary gain is not there. Yeah. So what's the incentive? I have long believed in it, in a set of a set of moral and political and ethical precepts. And one of the things I believe, in fact, I mentioned on the show that, that you, said, you said you saw as part of the goodbye, is that everybody has something they can contribute towards that goal, that goal of... of I, I always say if, if I could sum up everything I want in one word, that word would be justice. And everybody has skills they can use toward that end. My skill happens to be words. There's a lot of other necessary skills as part of that fight, as part of that struggle, where I lack them. In fact, uh, my, my list of inadequacies is quite long. But, I find that the, uh, well, I, I, the whole story came up because, uh, it's a true story, I had a friend, uh, still living in New Jersey, uh, had been roped into doing a presentation on world hunger at her local, local church, and she asked me for some background of it. And um, she said she was nervous about doing it, and she said she envied my ease of giving speeches. And I said, well, I envied her gregariousness. She was very comfortable one-on-one -on -one with strangers. So I said, you know, one of the good things, one of the skills is door-to-door -door petitioning. I stink at that. I always found that very intimidating to go to a street that I don't know anybody, go up to strange door after strange door, knock or ring and stand there with political petition in my hand and eager expression on my face. <laughs> but for her, she said, oh, she, she didn't see how that was anything special. But yeah, it is. Yes, it's it a is. necessary skill. So there's all kinds of skills that are part of this that I lack in considerable measure. But I do have one skill, which is about words. I'm, I'm, I can write, I can do press releases, I can talk. Um, and so this show, that's what it was. It was just another way I thought I could contribute. But, I don't know how to say this, Larry. It's, it's just, uh, you talk like you've uh, graduated from Cambridge and Oxford at the same time. You're, oh. you're so articulate, so clear. You're, you're, you make your points, there's no <laughs> doubt about what you're talking about. And that's, that's an art. That's or not. Was it Jack Pa? You remember Jack Pa? Oh, yeah. Jack Pa said, he turned to the audience and said, I have no talent. All I can do is talk. All I can do is talk. talk. Yeah. That's a, that's a God-given gift. Somebody said, Dale Carnegie. It just came to my mind. How about that? 
Dave, remember Dale Carnegie? Well, not personally, but yes, the no. name, yeah. He's the one that said, he gave lessons on how to talk. Yes, yeah. And the other Dale Carnegie, the steel magnet, okay. said, give me a man that can talk and I'll hire him tomorrow. So it's, it's not something that everybody can do. You and I happen to be gifted, you more so than me. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because oh, one thing is that my show is, uh, I freely confess this, is largely scripted. Um, it's like written out in advance. For one thing, I do that because I want to have that time. I want certain things I want to cover in a certain period of time, and I want to know I can do it yep. in that time. Yep. At the very beginning of the show, when I first was doing it, I, was, um, I just had some notes, a couple of pages of notes to remind me of things I wanted to talk about. But... Um, over time, I started taking what I did on the show and posting it on my blog. But then I had to write in complete paragraphs, complete sentences. So I started, well, why don't I just do that first instead of having to do this twice? <laughs> that makes sense. So I wound up by the end that it largely was. Uh, because, see, again, this is a skill that you have that I don't. I could not just do it on the fly for half an hour. Oh, it's I, prepared. Think, I think you could. I think you could. Even, even at the beginning, I, I had notes as to what topics I wanted to cover, and I'd have notes about if there was a particular fact, I wanted to make sure I had a number right. Yeah, but, but Larry, you're going you're gonna to see one thing here. What, my show, I don't have a script. Right. Uh, anything prepared except what's in here. But I, my show is fluff. I don't need a lot of facts and figures to back it up because what I say, nobody's going to question but what you say is going to be questioned over and over and over again. So you better be right. So therefore, you have to have a script. You well, have again, to know I, what you're going to say. I had notes were enough when I had facts. It just it just it turned to a script because I had it. I had to write it all out anyway at some point. Yeah. So it was yeah. just saved time, saved effort. Talking to Larry Erickson. If you haven't seen his show, it started out left side of the aisle, which I thought was a great name. I thought that was terrific. And then as time went on, he changed the name to What's Left, which is also great. And this man talks generally about politics. He does get a few asides, like last night he talked about Thanksgiving and what the Indians did and what the Pilgrims did and all that. And it was very, very interesting. So if you've never seen his show, you should, because it's really, really great. You don't have to Probably won't agree with him. That's okay. He doesn't mind that. He knows you're going to disagree. That's good. That's fine. We'll be back in just a minute with more from Larry Erickson. Okay, we're back. And again, we're talking with Larry Erickson. Uh, Larry... Uh, I think we left off, um, when I got off camera, when I did my monologue and I came back here, you explained what Henry David Thoreau went to jail for. Oh, about the poll tax. Yeah, could, yeah. You, could you tell the people a little more? Yeah, he, he actually said that it, it was a protest against the Mexican-American War in 1846, 1846 to 48, I think it was. Um, and that's why he wound up going to jail, about refusing to pay that tax. Um, he was in jail for one night. Emerson bailed him out the next morning and right. did say the line about why are you in there, why or no, R That's Ralph, right. why are you out there. Uh, it was that night, during that night, that he wrote um, the essay on the duty of civil disobedience, yeah. Yeah. which uh, you mentioned that uh, Gandhi supposedly knew it by heart. He'd read it so many times. Yep. Um, Martin Luther King, sort of, I read it several times. You did? Yeah. yeah. I, see, this is what I mean, Larry. You, I've, I read that probably something every night about Henry David Thoreau, and I never picked that up. I read The Life on the Merrimack, uh, anything that he wrote. But you, out of nowhere, right out of the air, you picked out that because of the Mexican War, and he was in only jail one night, and Emerson bailed him out the next day. How do you retain all that? Uh, same way you retain everything you know, it's, you know, my, my brain. Yeah, my, my synapses function, if you, the neurons fire. It's, well, I, 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 let me tell you a quick story. I, I used to be a professional photographer years ago. Oh, wow. And 
one time my 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 wife it's my first wife Linda um, she asked me something about photography which was a mistake because I actually answered her <laughs> and at that time she said how do you remember all that stuff I said you're a registered nurse how do you remember all that stuff yeah it's true it's true we all have the stuff that, that we remember. I suppose, I but when you can it. reach back and get a date out of the air <laughs> like that, 1846, I believe well, that was the date. Yeah. I believe that was the date. And I'm startled. I'm impressed. Allow me to be impressed. All right. Be <laughs> impressed. <laughs> uh, you're going to leave us. Yeah. You're going to leave the show. I should yes, say. yes. Yeah. Uh, why? Well, th th actually, it was, it was the 300th show. I've been doing it for six and a half years. I didn't realize that. Wow. It was 300 shows, wow. six and a half years, almost a uh, show a week. Wow. Um, and I did not want it to come. There were times when, I mean, I know you've done enough shows. There were times, there had to be those times when you're doing the show and you think, all right, I'm going to get through this because I have to do this. I'm yeah. supposed to be here, gonna, yeah. so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it professionally. I'm gonna, and that was happening occasionally. And it, feel, it felt like there were weeks that felt like a burden rather than anything. And I did not want that to start to creep into the actual show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the old thing about going out on a high note, I suppose. And 300 was a nice round number. It's a nice one, one number. Of, one of those nice double zero numbers that we all like so much. <laughs> um, and what, I mean, I, I, I've even said there's no guarantee that it won't come back. If it does, it'll be in some altered form. It wouldn't be the same show. One of the reasons, in fact, I changed the name. Well, two reasons. One, I was never crazy about left side of the aisle because it makes it sound like I'm a Democrat. And it does, yeah. I would be at the far, far left edge of the Democratic Party. Wait a minute. Uh, are you not a Democrat? No. The left side of the aisle indicates no. that you are. That's one of the reasons a I didn't like it. A screaming liberal. That's why, well, um, the screaming part, the liberal part is the problem. It's more like the screaming even further. Let's put it this way. In, in a number of ways, Bernie Sanders is to my right. Really? Yes. It's really? Yeah. Holy on, mackerel. On, well, on matters of like foreign policy, uh, he's, he's pretty establishment on foreign policy uh, overall. Um, he's a very establishment on Israel. His record on guns is not that good. Really? Um, Isn't he a socialist though? Larry? He's a democratic socialist. Yeah, okay. it is his economic thing on the whole is very good, but it said it's so even there. Um, but I also wanted to change it to what's left, with the idea of I wanted to spend more time talking about broader themes, like what's a left view on uh, on health care. Um, what's a left view on? What's a left foreign policy? What's a left whatever? Um, and I deliberately say a instead of the, because it's my left, not the left. <laughs> um, but the uh, it, it was the idea of. But I, I wound up still. Made, I never actually got there because I still wound up with the the news of the week. The news of the week. So if what's left ever comes back, it will come back in some altered form where it will be like broader themes as opposed to that week's news. Okay, can, can that, that come back? Is that is it copyrighted? The name? Um, no, 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 not copyrighted. I never so I could come back it. with the, what's left. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't even dare to yeah. compete with you. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm already getting pitched for other ideas of doing. Oh, I see. Great, great. The, the executive director here was not happy to see me go, <laughs> but uh, I think he just wants to fill the hours. I'll be honest um, with you. I, I'm not. I'm sorry to see you go. I'm not happy to see you go. I really, I really mean that. Uh, you and I don't socialize. Right. We yeah. are. We are friends. I hope. Yes. Yeah. But your show. When I see you come on the screen, I. My attention is riveted on that screen because. I want to get to a point where I can say, he's full of crap. And I talk, often do. Yeah, I'm sure you I do. Live, I live alone. I'm sure everybody does. And the only one that reacts is my dog. Yeah. And she agrees with me hmm. for the most well, part. Well, she kind of has to. <laughs> She's a dog. She has to. It's one of the. But what you I present to the public, to the viewing public, 
is well researched, it's articulate, it's so, so clear. You've got that voice that just, it's, I, got, I understand what you're saying. And that's unusual for me. I'm only a hairdresser, you know. Yeah, only. Only. <laughs> We've heard some of your stories. What are you going to do? What's going to happen? If you're going to leave the show, what's going to happen? I said, I have to find a different way to contribute. And that's what it's going to be. I mean, I, it's, this is not, it's not the end of activism. It's not the end of political involvement. I just have to find a different way to contribute than yeah. the show. Because I, said, I, did, I didn't want any frustrations to start. I didn't want the quality to ever go down. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're aware of the quality of your show? Yeah, well... And that's nothing I'm, wrong with I'm that. Aware of, I'm aware of trying to maintain a level of quality. Yes. Um, <laughs> always, uh, almost every week, um, Donna, that's, that's my wife, uh, she would ask me, you know, well, you know, how did the show go? And every, almost every week my answer would be, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I'm, I'm never entirely pleased with it. That's a sign of quality. There's no yeah. question about that. That's a sign of quality. I feel the same way about some of the shows I yeah. do. Go home I, like I say, I live alone, but I do have this lady I see. She said, how'd the show go today? Yeah, I think I'm going to quit. Yeah. I, I'm getting bad now. It's, it's, it's all over. I've been doing this for 40 years. Not yeah. public. Commercial. I was doing commercial television off and on for yeah. like 20 years until I got involved in this. And, uh, but I've been around. I've seen some guys that, uh, on public on uh, community access television. And like I said, maybe off camera. Uh, you do one hell of a job, Mr. Erickson. Well, I appreciate I'm that. I'm proud to be associated with you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so you still you still will work here. You have a title. Yes. Would you mind telling the yes. people? Yes, I'm the program coordinator. Program coordinator. Yeah. And you'll still maintain that. Oh yes. That yeah. Job, so yeah, that's entirely separate. Okay. In fact, you know, Would you ever think of going on another community access uh, channel uh, in another town, maybe? Uh, well, it, it was, the show was seen in some other towns through a, a thing called Peg Media, which is where um, public access stations can share programs with okay. each other. So it was actually seen in about seven places around the country. Do you get comments? Do you get feedback? I get some. I get some. Not a great deal, but then again, this is public access, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the, uh, but I, I get some, yeah. The, the, oddly enough, the thing that I noticed about it is that the responses I got, even when they were, how should I put, even even when they were hostile, were courteous is not quite the right word, uh, but it's like nobody screamed, nobody's yelling. There were no flame wars. Okay. Um, even even when people thought I was a complete idiot, they were they said respectfully, sir, <laughs> you're a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one thing I noticed that I appreciated about what I took to be my viewers is that they, um, they were willing to engage intelligently without just throwing brickbats and walking away. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that what you do is something that you'll never be able to give up. I think you'll always be researching, even if it doesn't go on the air. You will always be trying to satisfy yourself and see what's going oh, on. Oh, there'll always be something. Yeah. There'll always be something. Yeah. Would you, if it won't happen, but if the networks offered you a job on television, would you do it? Yeah. Do it? Yeah. Because the one thing that I really lacked here, which it's just the reality of like, is that, you know, the people who do it on network, they have staffs. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's they, true. Have, they have staffs to actually do a lot of the research. Yeah. So you can do a lot more research and you can get a lot more, you can get a lot deeper into things. Yeah. Uh, that when you're doing it, you're doing it alone, it's just not possible. It's yeah. not yeah. physically possible. No, I agree with that. Didn't you also work at the Plymouth Plantation? Yes, I did. I was there for six what years. Were, what would you do? There? I was an interpreter. Interpreter? Interpreter down in the village, yeah. For how long? About six years. Enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Oh, when, yeah. I, when I first met you, we did a show at the Plymouth Plantation. You yes. asked if you could go along? Yes. And when we went along, somebody made a statement on the air, and you challenged that. Do you recall that? No, I do not. You do not? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> okay. What I mainly recall was having trouble keeping up because I was on crutches yes, at the you time. Were. That's right. That's right. What, why were you on crutches? Oh, I blew up my knee. My knee gave out. Oh. So. All right. 
Well, I don't know what else to say. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the people that you didn't say last night? For all of you who have watched the show, um, thank you. Thank you. There's no point in doing it if it's not uh, people watching it. And we, we do this, I mean, let's be blunt, a lot of us do this because it's fun. You're on television, man. Yeah. And uh, a little bit for our own ego, the fact that people might watch Absolutely. it. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all part of it. But I appreciate the fact that people will pay attention to the show. I appreciate those who responded to it, even when the responses were critical. In fact, sometimes especially when they were critical. Because if somebody praises you, then you just get, oh, you're great, and that's the end of it. But if somebody criticizes you, you have something to engage to go back and forth with. So again, that would be my big thing. Thank you for watching. Um, it may be back in some form, I don't know. We'll see. That's the future and I don't know that. I'm done. God bless you. God bless you, that was great. I, uh, before I leave, and am change the subject for just a moment. Uh, this is two days before Thanksgiving and I'll speak to the staff here for Rich, for Will, for Chris, for Don, Ivana, Dylan, Larry, of course. I want to wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Now, you're not going to see this until after Thanksgiving is over, but we, I, we, I, I, I want you to get that message. Probably won't see this until next Thanksgiving, but that's okay. It's worth watching when it comes your way. I want to thank Larry Erickson very much for coming here today. I know it was uh, an ordeal for him to get here with the snow and the mountains and yes. all that. Yeah. But, uh, he did come here, as I said I'll some time ago, that if he ever should leave, I would like to bid him a bon voyage. And I think we've done that. Thank, thank you so you much. Ken. Thank you, Ken. Whatever you do, I wish you the best. Thank you. And now... The time has come to say goodbye. This is Ken Simmons saying, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, be prosperous, be healthy. Keep a song in your heart. Goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.